Alright, hello! Welcome back! This Let's Play shall continue now. Uh, after my f doing a bunch of farming in the uh, church area, uh, I now have a bunch of uh, extra equipment. So obviously I've upgraded my uh, Cestus to plus 5. And I have a full set of boulder armor at plus 3. Now I can't wear the helmet yet because if I do I will have uh, slow roll and I want to keep uh, at least the moderate roll going for the moment. And it did occur to me that uh, we missed a couple of areas in the church that I should uh, go show you. Actually, there's an area down here that I will uh, show you as well while I continue to uh, explain how the uh, farming session went. And the, the farming session went uh, pretty well. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the little smash-up video I made. Now, if you were wondering what this area is, this is uh, the entrance to Sense Fortress, which is a, a area you come to later in the game after you ring the Two Bells of Awakening, which is basically the, what the focus of the first part of the game is. But you can talk to uh, Onion Knight here. Hmm. 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 Uh, he's asleep. But if you keep talking to him, he'll wake up. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall. Or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge. No matter how long I wait. And oh, have I waited. So, here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Okay. <laughs> That's enough Still of that. Closed. Still closed. Mm. Apart from talking to Sigma, there's nothing you can actually do over this way until much later. So now back to the church. Uh, although I've upgraded my equipment quite a bit, I haven't actually upgraded any of my levels. Still the same level I was when I last uh, made a proper video. So just 13, which I suppose is pretty low, all things considered. I'm gonna need more levels if I want to maintain some sort of competitive advantage without a shield. So let's try uh, another upgrade to uh, my endurance and vitality. I don't think this will let me wear the helmet, but I will give it a shot. Nope. Is that rolling? Get back to the thief mask for a little bit. I have a few options as to where I could go next after uh, I do this church area. I'm not entirely certain which one is the best, because... Normally, it wouldn't be that difficult to go in several different directions, but uh, due to the uniqueness of my playstyle, I've actually got a few uh, issues to overcome, no matter which way I go. Uh, for instance, uh, normally one would naturally uh, complete the church area by defeating the uh, boss of the church area, which is the Bell Gargoyles. However, this is going to be very hard to do, since I've... Like, I, it could be made easy. If I summoned uh, an NPC phantom to help me, it would probably become quite a trivial fight, but I want to avoid doing that, unless I have absolutely no choice. Because, uh... I feel part of the point of a fist weapons uh, challenge is to actually do the fights with the fist weapons and not uh, rely on outside sources for help. Come on. There we go. So, I mean, if I summon a phantom, I'm, it doesn't really matter whether I'm using a shield or not. It becomes really easy just to uh, wait for them to be distracted and hit them from behind. So, yeah, there's no point in doing a challenge that way, is there? 
Now, I, I remembered that I had left this guy alone the first time I came through here and hadn't shown off which item he was guarding, so let's take care of him now. Night shield. It's a decent shield. It's not, uh... I think it's a bit heavy, is its only downside. Otherwise, it's a decent 100% physical shield. You know, mod modest defense to fire. Not too shabby. Particularly if you've still got a pretty lousy uh, starting shield. Apart from the wooden shield, that's probably your first uh, opportunity to get a free shield if you don't want to buy one off the merchant. Oh, a soldier's waist cloth. An embarrassing piece of armor to be sure. No. Yeah. Looks like someone's giving me a free Estus flask. Good for them. Uh, that little particle you saw before was, uh, if, if I, I'm playing on online at the moment, taking a little, uh, risk that I might get booted occasionally, but, uh, if you're online and, uh, somebody kindles the, uh, last bonfire that you rested at in their world, uh, you receive a free Astus Flask for just, uh, being a nice person. Just, just one of the ways the, uh, online con connectivity of this uh, game makes everything a little better. Like I don't have to play with people to feel like I'm part of a wider community. Nope. 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 Too soon. Calm down. Take it one step at a time. Now, the only other part of the church area that we haven't seen is the upstairs part. And this could be interesting. It's obviously the uh, sorcerer up there is still alive. Along with his murderous army of uh, zombies. Which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with as being rather annoying. This guy has troubles. Spellcaster has buffed these zombies. So I have to be a little careful about how I kill them. This corner is actually a good spot a lot of the time. Since their pathfinding makes them pause for a second. Going around the corner. Can't take it for granted though. Also if possible, don't lock on. Oh. Looks like someone else has uh, beaten the bell gargoyles in another world. You get to hear the bells of awakening actually uh, sound when uh, someone, when you when you're online and somebody else uh, rings a bell. You get to hear it in your world. Which I thought was a, like it's a it's a very singular feature that they stuck in this game. It doesn't do anything, and there aren't many other features in the game like it, but it's still a nice touch. Without his zombies, this guy's in some tough. Nope. Just, uh... Don't get hit like a fool. And watch out for the trident. A couple of strong attacks will stagger him right nicely. And then he goes down. If you're really lucky, he'll drop his trident, which is a pretty funny weapon that lets you do the uh, power-up dance. But it looks like uh, luck's not with me today. It, it is a very rare drop. Infamously rare drop if you're after the uh, weapons trophy. 
there's respawning channelers later in the game, but even then, with uh, infinite tries, it can be a huge pain to actually uh, get them to drop their trident. Now, that's all the enemies in the church area. But there's a couple of items around here. Let's see what we got. Large soul of the name of soldier. Not too shabby. Not too great either, but hey, it's just there. There's some better treasures up here, I think. Or at least, uh, maybe not treasures, but uh, interest points. There's one treasure. Pickled man. Reveal your secrets. And he drops to the floor. Pillage humanity. Pickled humanity. What could be here? Not terribly hidden in the room. And here's where we get to use our mystery key. Oh, still human, are you? Then I am in luck. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without recourse. Use the mystery key, and you can free this guy. Whether that's good or a bad thing is uh, to be determined at a later point. Yes, sincerely, I am Knight Lautrec of Karim. I truly appreciate. And I am totally not evil. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. It's like paying no attention to yes. my terrifying face or evil-sounding voice. To uh, take a quote from uh, Red Media. <laughs> Even though he is evil, freeing him will uh, allow you to uh, do some interesting things later. So it's worth having. Although, I t technically, I think he frees himself if you uh, leave him alone to long enough. So maybe there's no. Uh, you, you will get a, uh, a little reward for freeing him yourself, but uh, I think the main points will uh, continue regardless. Now with that, we, had, we have completed the church building. With the exception of, of course, the boss upstairs. Now the only reason I'm not doing the boss at the moment is because I feel he would kick my ass quite easily with the setup I currently have. And there's no immediate uh, need to defeat the Belfry Gargoyles, because they do not... You, you will unlock a, uh, obviously, the Bell of Awakening, which will, which is one of the bells required to unlock Sense Fortress. But it's only one of the bells. There is another bell you could head towards first, and then come back and do the um, Bell Gargoyles quite easily. It's not hard to get to here. And uh, that's an option. The benefit to doing the uh, Bell Gargoyles early, of course, is that, uh, aside from them being uh, a weaker sort of boss than uh, some of the later bosses... Although, no, no, that's probably a bit wrong too. Like, it might, maybe it might be true statistically, but they're actually quite a pain. They're one of the more difficult bosses for... if you're uh, not in an exploiting mood. I, I don't feel very confident against the Bell Gargoyles because I'm going to have to fight them without a shield, with a fairly subpar kind of weapon, uh, two versus one, because the uh, trick to beating uh, the Bell Gargoyles by yourself without any help is usually that uh, you get to get a high-powered weapon like the Drake Sword and just sort of utterly destroy the first one before the second one turns up. Like, that's the, that's the given strategy. But that's going to be very hard with a punch weapon. Particularly while I have to actively avoid uh, their attacks rather than block any of them. If I could block, you could uh, probably manage quite okay. But since I can't block, this is going to be a little difficult. A little bit more. There we go. So, what are my other options? My... My other options are to use that basement key and go down to the Lower Berg area and then the Depths, which is the 
route you would normally take to uh, get to the second Bell of Awakening. It's a, it's a long sort of journey, but uh, that's the first steps you would normally take. The other place one can go is into the Darkroot Garden area. And the Darkroot Garden area isn't a bad place to go. A lot of people would uh, go there to uh, defeat the Moonlight Butterfly quite early. And the Moonlight Butterfly fight, much like the uh, Bell Gargoyle fight, can be made incredibly trivial just by uh, not... Well, you go into your human form, you summon an NPC phantom, in the case of the uh, butterfly, which Beatrice, she can kill the boss by herself. Relatively easy. In fact, she, she's so good at killing it that the Moonlight Butterfly boss battle is usually considered a jerk. Anyone with, like, pyromancy, a decent ranged weapon, or a very powerful melee weapon really shouldn't have much trouble with the Moonlight Butterfly. Alas, I don't have any of them, so the Moonlight Butterfly is actually going to be a little difficult. I really don't know if I could defeat it uh, in, on my first try, using nothing but punching. Even these guys, who are normally quite uh, easy to kill, can give me a bit of trouble. Uh, what else is there? There's the uh, Darkroot Forest, which is... Uh, just beyond the Darkroot Garden. There's nothing particularly stopping me from going there except for the difficulty of the enemies. I mean, I get a lot of souls from there, but uh, that's not entirely the point. The uh, Darkroot uh, Garden area where the Hydra is is open. But again, I'm not certain I want to fight the Hydra under the current circumstances. Oop. Better regroup. These guys are good for uh, getting uh, poison and uh, toxic relieving items, which we're going to need if we really want to go down to the second bell. So it's always useful to come over here for those, if nothing else. The uh, Darkroot Forest is uh, just beyond this door. You can buy the key to this door by uh, giving 20,000 souls to the uh, blacksmith that we uh, passed on our way here. And you can find a place to rest right here, in this bonfire area. I don't know when I'll next be around here, so I might use some of the massive humanity I've been collecting to kindle the fire. There we go. Now, even though I'm not confident about defeating the butterfly, I think I will go down to the uh, Darkroot Garden area. I know the uh, game considers this whole area to be part of the Darkroot Garden, but uh, this is the part I actually think of as the Darkroot Garden itself. I consider the other part the, basically the Darkroot Lake and the uh, Darkroot Forest, just to keep them all separate. Uh, there's an item here, and there's, there's, they're not hiding very well, these little bushes here. Uh, there's vine enemies again. Uh, that item in the middle there, I know for a fact, is just a soul. Basically just a pile of uh, souls, nothing very valuable at all. If you never take it, they'll never come to life and they'll never bother you. And uh, if you're... Like you can you can wait until you've defeated the butterfly to take it. Because if you do take it, they are going to harass you every time you walk down this corridor, and if you have to make multiple trips to the butterfly, it's gonna be a pain. 
Maybe not so much if you had a shield, but I don't have a shield. Attacking them. Well, avoiding their attacks while not having a shield is a little difficult. They're an annoying sort of enemy that was designed with shields in mind, I think. Let's see. That tree over there is actually alive. A lot of people just kill him and don't think about it. But uh, he actually does something kind of funny. If you uh, basically, if you if you go deep into the area and then come back, he'll have moved, and he'll be standing in front of uh, this corridor where you just came from. And it's a, a little gimmick to make you think, to make you get lost in the garden. But uh, most people don't fall for it. But it's still kind of funny that he even does it. I don't know, I think it was interesting. It's like there's only two of those uh, tree guys in this entire game. And they're used for that purpose. These enemies are kind of rare too. These little lizards. Oh. I forgot I was going to be ambushed by that guy. Yeah, man. If you don't have a shield like me, it's best to try and just stun lock these guys. Because their wind ups are pretty slow. Pebble Moss Clump. Good for getting rid of poison. Partisan. I don't have much to say about that weapon, I don't think I've ever really used it. It's basically a spear, I think. I don't know if those stats are supposed to be good or bad, but there you are. Now, there's a decent set of armor in the middle of there, but it's surrounded by plants and uh, stone giants. These guys are actually not quite as much trouble as you might sometimes think of them as. They are completely vulnerable to being attacked while they're casting that uh, effect. Uh, while that spell is on, you'll move very slowly and be unable to roll, basically. Or if you can roll, you're going to roll like a fat ass, no matter how uh, light you might actually be. The best way is just to hit them mercilessly while they're casting it. Now, you could just fight these guys carefully, but it's going to be hard to fight a giant and some plants at the same time, so I'm going to book it. Basically, the plants will play possum until the uh, nearby giant comes to life, so that you're forced to fight them all at the same time. And that's annoying, but what can you do? If you've got a good blocking uh, shield, it's pretty easy to kite the plants out and kill them. But because I have to spend so much time avoiding the uh, plants' attacks while the uh, giant is trying to menace me, it's a bad idea when you don't have a shield to fight them both. So I thought I'd just grab the item and uh, run. Elite, Elite's Knight Set used to be like a pretty overpowered uh, set of armor. I believe it was nerfed quite a bit though. You can get these guys swords and shields off them if you're uh, lucky when they drop. But if you're not lucky, then uh, that will just be a pain in the ass. Just get behind them as they're uh, getting up. As you can see, sometimes locking on is not so good with these guys, so don't do it. Just 
just, just keep circling around them. They're too slow to actually do anything too fancy. Now, I don't think my attack is actually strong enough to knock these guys off their tree, which is unusual, but there you go. This is probably the first time I've ever had an attack so weak I couldn't knock them off the tree. I actually have to kill them before they come down. <laughs> uh, these guys drop uh, egg verm fires or something along those lines. Basically a furry egg item which uh, can cure you of parasites. Nothing too important. You're unlikely to uh, suffer the egg curse unless you uh, get surprised by the uh, egg guys in the lower swamp area. Yeah, I'm actually uh, getting a decent chunk of souls here. But uh, this is this is where the uh, boss of this area is. It's not, not such a long walk, is it? The Moonlight Butterfly! Now, whether I want to fight the Moonlight Butterfly or level up at the moment is a decent question. I don't really want to waste souls and humanity that I've gained too whimsically. So for the moment, I think I will go back and spend a little. Because part of the problem is I'm just so low leveled at the moment. Uh, defeating the Moonlight Butterfly will not get me any uh, particularly special items. Or oh, no, no, sorry, that was wrong. I meant to say it wouldn't give me any uh, special access to any areas. This is basically a dead end area with just the Moonlight Butterfly. The reason for coming here is to get the Divine Ember from the Moonlight Butterfly. Because with the Divine Ember, you can make weapons which will make the catacombs much less arduous to get through. I, I don't know how uh, viable it actually is to try and enter the catacombs without a Divine Weapon. I'm aware that technically it's possible, but like having to fight through the regenerating skeletons in order to get to their uh, respective necromancers, like, not pleasant. I couldn't recommend that to anybody. If you're looking to challenge yourself, maybe, but apart from that, nope. Terrible idea. How many level ups could I do? I could do two. Now, what would be the best for my situation? Pretty much stuck on uh, dexterity, so let's make some dexterity. Increase our attack power just a tiny bit. If I ever get claws later, like their uh, dexterity scaling is even better, so should be good. Now I think I'll run back to the uh, Moonlight Butterfly and uh, end the video before my first attempt to uh, defeat it. Now, make no mistake, if the Moonlight Butterfly utterly kicks my ass and I'm completely unable to continue, I won't push the issue just yet. Because there are other ways to uh, I can go in order to profit here that are more suitable to my chosen weapon style. slow. When you're slowing me, you're too slow. Ragdoll! I, I, I enjoy how heavy they seem when they're moving, but how light they are when they're dead. <laughs> now this will be an exercise in my ability to dodge and my ability to do a ton of damage during a very short window when I am allowed to damage him. I, I don't really like my chances. 
be honest. And if there's a secret to dodging some of these guys, like uh, more annoying attacks, I, I don't really know what it is. That one I can usually avoid quite easily. The needles, it just depends on whether I'm standing in the right spot or not. Oh crap, oh crap. It shows a bad time to heal. Yeah. As you can see, I'm pretty bad at this. Although the irony of that is like, why would anyone ever get good at this when there's such an easy way to win this boss fight uh, by summoning a phantom? <laughs> you don't need to be good at this in order to get past this fight if you're uh, willing to do it the cheap way. If you if you come in, if you if you want to do it by yourself without relying on a phantom though. Just get a good magic uh, resistance shield. And that whole, uh, yeah. I'm in a lot of trouble. I do not do nearly enough damage in order to clear this fight. Maybe I'll get better at dodging her, her attacks as we go, but uh, it seems unlikely. <laughs> I'm trying to dodge as the uh, attack goes off, but the timing can be a bit tricky. At, le at least he's not doing any uh, of his advanced attacks yet. Oh! Work too soon. Not only did I speak too soon, I totally got. Yeah. I thought it would be uh, give me more space with his attack, but uh, nope. Did the next attack instantly and killed me. Ay ay ay. Well, I think this is a good time to uh, have a little break in the video. Uh, next time I'll uh, go get a couple more items out of the Dark Root Garden and then I'll probably proceed to the Lower Berg area, I think. Since uh, I, I know very well that I won't fare against the Gargoyles any better than I just did against the Butterfly without uh, a bit more uh, power behind me. I'll see you then.